Yeah, let's go. Let's read the one here, Eric. Um, what are some of the uh, things y'all took out of New England, the defenses, performance, y'all were able to get home on some blitzes? And uh, did y'all do some things y'all think y'all can build on here over the last seven games? Yeah, um, I think it just comes down to being on the details, knowing the, knowing the installs that we're putting in for the week, and just playing fast, man, and doing things that we know we do well, and just sticking to that. Have you seen the growth? Matt said, hey, the defense, you know, kept this thing close, and we, you know, he said they couldn't get over the hump, but did you see, have you seen the growth in the defense and the guys uh, coming around, and, you know, making plays and so forth? Yeah, I think we responded well, you know, I've obviously, you know, we go back to the Dallas game, and I think it was all three phases that took turns, you know, kind of falling apart at moments, and you know, I think the defense we took a we took a step in the, this past game, and uh, obviously you you go back and look look at all the film. It's we got to play three phases, and that's you know that's pretty generic to say around the league, but you know for this team to really thrive and, and to come out of these close games, all three phases have to play well. And what about you? You know, they're mixing and matching that Nick was moving around different mm -hmm. spots and so forth. How do you you know make sure you're on top of your things? To, to perform at that, you know, I, asking you to do so much. Right. I just take pride in my work and, uh, you know, kind of been part of my journey. I just take pride in the details and doing uh, the small things right. Um, am I perfect at every time they move you around? I'm not perfect, but, you know, as far as being in, on the details and getting lined up and doing my assignment, you know, that's 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 the things that coaches get frustrated about. You, We get bit, beat physically in this game. Everybody gets paid to, to do that. Um, it's just about lining up and playing ball. Eric, you had said before about, you know, why is no unit on this team, be it offense, defense, or special teams, been consistent in improvement? Because it seems like everything's been up and down, <laughs> no matter what it's been this year. Yeah, I mean, that's a good, fair question. Um, I think when you see inconsistency throughout the league, um, I think it might just be a lack of focus, right? You win, a, you win a close game, and then you think, OK, things are good. And maybe you don't prepare as well, you know? Um, not even saying just as a team, it could be individuals, it could be a collective group of things, but um, you just, in this in this business, you got to bring focus each and every week. And uh, especially when you play against the, uh, the good teams and every team is, is good on Sundays, right? You have to show up every week. So just being consistent with your uh, focus. How do you how do you remedy that? I mean, because that seems, that seems like something that's kind of more of a broader, big picture, you know, type right. of thing or something. How do you tangibly just making sure, uh, making sure the accountability is the same each week, right? You know, it, whether whether I miss a tackle, you know, and it's a loss, and then we harp on it because we lost the game, and hey, you got to make this tackle, and then we win, and you miss a tackle, and it's just like, hey, get the guy down. It's like it's not the same tone, right? It's just the accountability each and every week, whether it's a win before or a big game, or you think it's a big game, the accountability has to be there each and every week, and uh, I think that's how you build consistency. Not having Jalen over the last. Games. I mean, how do you feel like that kind of affected things rotationally, not having him out there with you guys? Yeah, he's a big part of what we do. Um, obviously, he, he's he gone in there and he, he's made big plays for us. So, you know, just his energy alone, uh, he's very energetic. He's quiet, but he's energetic for our room, right? You might not see him always being uh, having that type of spark outside of it because he kind of stays to himself. But when he's around us, he brings a lot of energy. And uh, obviously, he's a very good ball player, for, and especially for being young. I think it's interesting that I feel like Dean Pease kind of lives by the yards don't matter, points do type of uh, philosophy of a defense. I mean, where do you kind of fall on, on that spectrum when it's like, you know what, like it, if we are not giving up points in the red zone in terms of guys getting in the end zone, I mean, how, how do you kind of weigh that in your head in terms of your own right. personal look at it? I think when you come, when you think about it, like the structure, what are you built around? I think that's very important. Um, you got to be efficient on third down and the red zones, right? But then obviously sometimes you can say that, but then maybe your offense is struggling or special teams are struggling. And it's like, now that's not the answer, right? It comes down to field position. So we can't just let them drive and then, okay, we're getting off on a field goal and we're not letting them score touchdowns and stuff like that. So I think it can change each and every game depending, like, again, you play three phases and that's why you play the game. But uh, when, you're, when you're based off of everything, I think numbers are kind of, you know, messed up, right? Um, People, you know, they tell you, oh, you're leading the team in tackles or whatever it may be, but yeah, but your guy's also catching the ball. So that's maybe, you know, so everybody always gets caught up in numbers and you got to look at the grand scheme of things. The lack of pass rush or maybe successful pass rush, mm -hmm. but 
Yelton not getting this year? How, what, how does that impact the secondary? How does that hurt or alter what you guys are able or unable to do? Right. I think the guys have been, that have been uh, called upon to uh, step up in uh, place of injuries and stuff like that have done a, a, a good job. And uh, credit to those guys for stepping in on short short times, uh, whether they're in the scheme for very long. You know, we have guys that came in the middle of the year and they've gone in there. Um, but obviously, you know, we always talk about the, the rush and the coverage got to marry up. Sometimes they get sacks because we cover well. Sometimes we get picks because they rush well. So. Um, it, it just marries together, and when when those two things are off, you know it, it can be it can be rough. How do, you, do you sense when they're off? Like, can you sense in a game, in a, in a in a given week leading up to a game, even possession to possession, when they're off versus when they're synced? Like, is it is that something that is like literally like the, a cliche click, or is that just kind of a general? Not yeah. necessarily, because everything's happening so fast, and you go back and you know you get to look at the pictures and everything, but the pictures aren't moving, so you don't really know until you watch the film the next day whether it's like, man, if I would have covered that guy for a second, or I would have took away this route, that guy was a, a second away, or whatever it might be. So in the game, you really don't know, um, but obviously when they're hot, you know they're hot, right? So um, when it comes down to you know giving up passes or not getting pressure, you don't really know until the next day. Yeah, yeah. So is that something that, again, like how do you remedy that? Is that something that can be remedied in practice, or is that literally like you kind of have it or you kind of don't? Um, just getting down to the details and just making sure you know everything's based on one man doing their job and all eleven of us being on the same page. Yeah, Josh. Uh, uh, I mean, Eric. I was um, just studying on uh, Jacksonville yesterday. I was bored in the middle of the game. Uh, <laughs> uh, Tell me what they like to do. <laughs> <laughs> you got a scout report for me? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got a little bit. Yeah, there you go. James Robinson, the running back. What yes. Are, what are uh, you seeing from him? And it uh, looks like they're leaning on him a little bit over there. Yeah, they're, uh, they're putting a lot on his plate, uh, solid running back. And um, I think he's doing a good job. And uh, he's making the most of his opportunities. And then they, they're fussing, I guess, down there about, you know, how to run uh, – uh, how to work the young quarterback and uh, fight over RPOs and stuff, stuff he did at Clemson. Do y'all, have y'all seen that yet or y'all, that's something y'all will try to study? Or, but um, how dangerous he in RPOs? Right, I think it's just, you know, when these young quarterbacks are kind of like how college football is, a lot of RPO and stuff like that. So obviously he had a lot of success at um, Clemson doing that. And um, I think it's best in his interest to do, do whatever your quarterback's natural at, right? Uh, especially when he's a young guy, um, young guy, they got, they, you know, they got talent down there. So um, you just got to do whatever he's natural at and put him in comfortable positions and uh, allow him to be who he is to make plays. So, um, and, you know, you, you've seen his, you've seen his bright spots and you've seen his, his rookie moments, right? But that doesn't mean he's not a good player. I think he's a really talented player with a lot of upside. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anything else? All right. Thank you. All right. Appreciate All right. it, guys. Thanks, Thank you.